Hello dear chess friends, I'm International Master Andrei Ostrovsky and you're welcome to the series of lessons dedicated to the essentials of Queen and Games. In this lesson we continue the discussion of uh, Queen and Pawn versus Queen cases and uh, this time we are focused on Knights and Rooks pawns. In this uh, given position White has the pawn on b6 and uh, we should understand that uh, when it comes to the edge of the board, it becomes harder to convert the advantage for the strongest side, mainly because the passed pawn is no longer that efficient in the sense of uh, performing the role of a shield for a king, so it's harder to hide the king from uh, opponent's queen's checks. But there is the winning method, and we already discussed it in the previous lesson, so the king should occupy the same or adjacent file with opponent's king, and in this situation, we can see that uh, black's king is placed on the f file. So white's king should try to occupy the f file or let's say g file. It will be very efficient and promising because this increases the probability of uh, reacting to opponent's check with a counter check, which inevitably leads to exchanging queens. So let's have a look what is going on. The king is already under check, so there is no sense to keep the king on the queen's side because it is impossible to escape uh, numerous checks. So the king simply starts getting to the king's side where exactly black's king is placed. Queen d5, king c7, queen c5, king is d7. So here we can see that white has a good piece of placement because queen g6 protects b6 pawn, so white's king has no problems just leaving this pawn alone. Queen d5, king e7, queen c5, king f7, queen d5. Of course, there are a lot of other possibilities to check the king, but everything more or less by force leads to the same pattern. So king finally occupies g7 square, and we can see that now it is not possible to check the king, because in any case, the queen just covers, and it will be a counter check. For example, queen a1 check leads to queen f6, and so the exchange of queens is inevitable. The same is after queen b7 check. Queen simply goes to f7 check. And again, after exchanging queens, white easily wins. So after king g7, the only way for black to keep fighting is to go away from the f file and to regain the threat of uh, check. So king goes to e2. But this gives white a great chance to make a progress. So once the weakest side stops giving checks, this usually gives the strongest side a temple, and this temple might be decisive. And uh, here, white having the pawn on b6 can use this time to push the pawn further. So queen goes to c2, check. King goes to f1. Queen goes to b1, already occupying b file and supporting the pawn on b6. And after king goes away, b7. So queen is forced to a passive position on b8. But still, it is not very simple to convert this position because one of the winning plans here is to get to, let's say, c8 square or a8 square with the queen. But in this case, black's queen goes to the center, let's say to e5, starts attacking our king. And again, it becomes extremely hard to escape this perpetual check. So white has to be very careful and to base every decision on a proper calculation. So as we discussed already in previous lessons, queens and games are very, very complicated, mainly because of the ability of queens just controlling a lot of different squares. So there are usually a lot of different opportunities to be considered and, uh, well, predicted and accurately calculated. So first of all, white goes to e4, very good square for queen, because from this square, the queen simply protects b7 pawn. The queen controls e5 square, very important one. So black's queen has no chance to attack our king from this great position. And at the same time, it limits the activity of uh, king f2 to so this king remains somewhere on the king side where our king is, so that uh, we have a lot of different chances again to occupy the same or adjacent file and uh, to perform this counter check if necessary. 
By the way, general idea of having the queen in the center in such a situation. Uh, very good square, very good area for both uh, strongest side and weakest side. So it doesn't really matter if you play for a win or for a draw in such a situation. Well, try to occupy central position with your queen because it is the most promising position from the center. The queen can control everything and from the center this guy simply has <laughs> the access to any other area of the board and very quick access to be honest. So queen e4, king goes to g3, king goes to f7, queen c7 check, queen goes to e7, queen goes to f4 check, king goes to g7 and now if let's say queen goes to g4 then after king h8, white wins by force. Because look, there is already a possibility to cover the king from g7 square, right? And it will be a counter check. So uh, it's not possible to attack the king diagonally. If queen goes to h5 here, then queen h7. And again, as we can see, it doesn't really matter from which square the queen attacks our king. Our queen has two squares to cover the king and at the same time to attack opponent's king. So the same pattern, a counter check. So to king g7, the only way for black to keep fighting is just to come back with the queen to b8, after which white continues a somewhat subtle maneuver. So king goes to g6, white wants to find the best square for a king, and you will see which square white will finally use. So king g6, no checks. So actually, black has to move the king. Now king gets to f6. Now white performs the triangulation. Queen f4 check. King goes to g7. Now it's not possible to go back, let's say, because queen f8 wins. If queen gets to d4 with check, then queen f6 wins. Again, exchanging queens. So after king g7, queen g3 is necessary. And now king goes to f7. So we can see that uh, the check along the f file, again, is not possible because of queen f6 exchanging queens. So queen comes back. And the king goes to e6, getting closer at first glance to the pawn b7. So one of possible plans is, of course, to get closer to the own pawn, maybe to control square c7, to have the possibility to occupy this square with the queen. We already saw this pattern of winning such a position. But white lands something even more efficient and interesting, and also worth remembering. Let's say if uh, king goes to e4, then queen goes to b4 check. And after king f3, one of a sudden white king goes to f5. And this appears the best square for king because here the king is really safe. As you can see, no checks possible. So f8 square is controlled, c8 square is controlled, e5 square is controlled as well. So no checks. And uh, what is cool is that the king simply controls f4 square and in many cases white wins with the help of just performing the check on f4 or maybe on e5 it is also possible there are a lot of different threats connected exactly with these two checks and if king goes to e2 at first glance escaping both threats f4 and e5 checks with exchanging the queen white has a chance to perform this queen c4 check king d1 and queen c8 so we discussed this plan and uh, the problem was that uh, queen had the chance to go to the center in that case, right, to attack our king. Now our king occupies a perfect position, simply limiting the activity of the queen. So no more problems connected with uh, counterattack with black's pieces, right? So white simply wins controlling b8 square here. So after king e6, it is also possible to play king g2. Now again, king occupies this great f5 position. King goes to f1 because if king goes to f3, then it's easy. Queen e4 and then queen f4 or in case of king g3, queen e5 wins the game. But the king f5, king goes to f1. Queen goes to b4. 
King goes to g2, Queen goes to g4 check, King h1. So looks like Black did everything to escape this very dangerous diagonal h2, b8, or let's say f file or e file to be checked with the Queen from either f4 or e5. But uh, White also has the winning maneuver here. So Queen goes to g7. And this appears at Zugzwang. Well, maybe a bit surprising, but yeah, it's a Zugzwang because King still can't occupy this h2 square, so that's uh, getting to diagonal h2, b8, because white has queen e5. So King has no moves, simply. Which means that Queen has to move. And once the Queen goes away from the Caden square, this means white has a winning maneuver. In many cases, it is possible just to control the square of the promotion with the queen. But uh, sometimes it is possible even just to exchange the queen. So here, queen h7, king g1 and queen g6, exchanging queens looks like the easiest solution. But also, there is a possibility to do something like, let's say, queen a1 check. King goes to the second rank, doesn't really matter where, then queen b2 check. And the next move will be a promotion. But in this case, you have still to calculate some variations. So exchanging queens is, of course, the best solution, after which your opponent has no counterplay. So as we can see, when you have the knight's pawn, the win appears very, very hard task. So let's have a look what is going on when you have a rook's pawn. Positions with the rook's pawn are considered drawish, generally. But of course, everything depends on uh, concrete pieces placement. Why it is so hard to win the position with the rook's pawn? Well, the same reason. So it's even harder to escape uh, different checks. So you can't use this pawn as a shield. So, well, many depends on uh, where opponent's kin is. And if you have a chance to, well, perform the marsh of your king to the same file or the adjacent one with the opponent's king. So here, by the way, we can see that white is under check, right? And there is a choice where to go with the king. So generally, you have to try to occupy the square or the area which is diagonally opposite to opponent's pawn. So we can see that uh, black's pawn is on the king side. So the promotion square is h1. So you have to try to occupy a8 square or at least b8, b7, a7. So it is considered a drawish area, drawish zone and uh, the safest actually zone for the king, right? Here it is important to play king a6. After h3 and king a7, the king is already somewhere around the safe area. And even if black makes a progress with uh, pushing the pawn further, it will be extremely hard to make a general progress in this position, so to win it. King g4, queen goes to d6, because pay attention, there was already a threat of, let's say, check, and then uh, queen f4 or queen g3, so it's better to have the active queen. Queen f3, king goes to a7. Of course, you have to maneuver accurately to avoid exchange of queens. Queen f2, king b7, h2, queen g6. Black made enormous progress, but it's still very hard to do anything. So queen simply pursues the king, right? And, uh, well, of course, it's not possible now to perform the perpetual in this concrete situation because, look, if queen goes to d5, then queen g2 leads to uh, exchange of queens, right? Which wins for black easily. But it's still possible just to control the situation with accurate moves. Let's say queen g7 check, king a8, king g1, check. And just a barrier in the way of the king so this could of course take much more moves but looks like black has no winning plan here that's the point white decided to play king a4 and well this is a mistake because now black has great chances so queen f4 queen c2 king b4 h2 
already have in the pawn on the second rank, which is extremely annoying. So now white has a chance to keep the position only with the help of uh, continuous checks. But now black simply performs the plan, which is based on the pattern we already discussed. So the king goes to the queen side to occupy the B file or adjacent files. And probably it is harder, of course, if compared to the knight's pawn or let's say bishops or central pawns, but still it works here. And uh, well, based on proper calculation and accurate play, black's maneuver should lead to a win. King f6, queen h4, king e6, queen h3. There is enormous quantity of sidelines, of course. I just want to show you the main line, which just demonstrates the winning maneuver. Uh, king d6, queen h6, king c7, queen g7, king c6, king b7, so the king is already on the same file with the king, but it might be not enough. Queen f3, queen c6, queen f7, queen c7, queen goes to d5, for example, and now, well, king goes to c8. Now the problem for white is that queen a8 check doesn't work. In case of queen a8, black wins immediately with the help of queen b8. That's it, game is over, because queens are being exchanged. So the only check after king c8 is queen to g8. And one of the uh, psychological traps here is being afraid of leaving the passed pawn not protected. But sometimes exactly these moves are the best ones. So here, queen d8 is the greatest idea. Well, after queen g4 check, queen d7, queen g8, king c7, black gradually makes a progress. For example, now it's not possible to challenge the king diagonally because if queen g3, then queen goes to d6, covering the king and attacking the king on b4 and queen on g3, which leads to immediate exchange of queens. So queen should check from c4. King goes to b7, queen e4, queen c6, and now if, let's say, queen goes to e7, then king goes to a8. And after queen d8, king goes to a7. Now two possibilities to check lead to nowhere because queen has b7 and b6 squares to cover the king and to attack opponent's king with the immediate win. And finally, if queen goes to h7 with check, queen goes to c7, queen goes to e4, that is exactly the achievement of black. So after this subtle maneuvering, actually the queen checks the king not from d5, but from e4. And this appears a wrong place. So here queen has less possibilities to attack the king properly. So black has a winning maneuver. So king goes to b8 first. This forces queen e8 check. Now king goes to a7. Again, since there is a queen b6 possibility, a uh, diagonal check doesn't work. So queen a4 is the only check. And king b7. So we can see that uh, the own king here simply limits the queen and black uses this uh, situation to win the game because the only check which is legally possible here is the check along the b file, which leads to queen b6 with the immediate win for black. And uh, since uh, white has no this check, white has to make any other move which gives black decisive tempo to win the game since the pawn is already on the second rank. Let's make a general conclusion about this type of endgames. What is important to remember? First of all, uh, queen and pawn versus uh, queen is one of the most complicated types of endgames. So you have to be ready for hard work, right? If you uh, have this sort of endgames, well, it doesn't really matter if you are the strongest side or the weakest side, you have to work hard to calculate enormous quantity of variations and to calculate them accurately. Second of all, typically endgames of this kind with uh, bishops, pawns or central pawns are winning for the strongest side. And games with uh, knights pawns are harder to win, but in many cases the winning maneuver exists. 
and games with the rook spawn are generally drawish but again everything depends on pieces placement the main winning maneuver is connected with occupying the same or adjacent file with opponent's king the main defensive maneuver in many cases to put your king to the area to the corner which is diagonally opposite to opponent's past pawn so this works good in situations with knight's pawns and rook's pawns well the best defensive idea is of course to blockade the pawn with the king blockading the pawn with the queen makes the queen passive and in many cases leads to nothing and also the best area for both the queen of the strongest side or queen of the weakest side is of course the center thanks a lot for your attention see you next lessons